For the Imperium of Man, death is a part of everyday life. Humanity's history has been stained red with the blood of the fallen. But not every death is made in vain. Worried heroes have fought and died in order to save humanity, and thus martyrs were born through death. The Ecclesiarchy had canonized important individuals throughout history by naming them as saints, so their legends can continue to inspire humanity throughout the years after their deeds have long been done. There are currently far too many saints to name, however, I will be going over a few of the more notable saints in the history of Warhammer 40k. But first, let's take a look at how one becomes a saint in the eyes of the church. I am your host, The Sound Alchemist, and today we are going to look at the saints and what it means to become a saint in 40k. We do this each and every day, so if you guys like Warhammer 40k videos, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button. But for now, let's go right into this 40k video. So what you are seeing here is a chart that signifies how you become a saint. And the easiest way is by going via this line on the chart here. So the first question is, are you a Primarch? Simply state, if you are, as long as you didn't side with Horus during the heresy, you are considered a saint. So every loyalist Primarch out there is a saint in the eyes of the Ecclesiarchy and humanity. Now let's go on over to the other branch. So if you are not a Primarch, it, the next question is, are you a member of the Ecclesiarchy? Let's say you go ahead and say you are. So now we have this question. Are you a war master of the Imperium who has led a victorious crusade? Most of the time, you're not going to be one, but for the sake of this, let's go ahead and say yes. And boom, you're most likely an Imperial Saint. This we have none other than Lord Solar Macarius to think, which we'll get into that later. Now let's go back to that question. Are you a war master of the Imperium who has led a victorious crusade? Most of the time you are not, and it looks like this is where the eyes of the Ecclesiarchy will shut on you, and you won't become a saint. Now let's go back up once again. Are you a member of the Ecclesiarchy? Let's say you are. Are you one of the matriarchs of the Order's Militant? Meaning, are you a leader of one of the many Orders of the Sisters of Battle? If you are, boom, sainthood right then and there. Now, chances are there's very, very few of these, so, let's go ahead and hit the no column. Now the next question is, have you led an exemplary life of piety and dedication to the God Emperor? Of course, you're a loyal Imperial citizen, so let's go down that route. Have you ever received a vision from the God Emperor? Most don't, so let's go ahead and say that. Have you ever rallied the Imperium to a just cause and triumph over impossible odds? If not, that is where sainthood ends for you but if you have then you may be considered to become an imperial saint now going back to if you received a vision by the emperor and you say yes then you have one more question before you can be considered for sainthood did you answer the god and saw the vision and you acted on it and you actually made it a victory for the imperium then boom you're an imperial saint if not the God Emperor still has faith in you, but you have much more to do to become a saint. And that's pretty much it. So sainthood is reserved for very, very few. Uh, and I was actually surprised by how easy, in a way, it could be for one to become a saint. So just be an imperial warrior that has led countless crusades of victory for the Imperium. You have to be a Primarch. You have to be one of the basically the leaders of the Sisters of Silence in order to attain that godhood or have a vision and act on it positively. If you guys do want to see this chart for yourselves, I will be putting it down below in the description of the video so you guys can go ahead and check that out and go to the Warhammer community page to find out much more on sainthood. Now that we know how easy it is to become a saint in 40k, to become a saint in the real world, you have to go through a bunch of loops and hurdles but I'm just going to give you just one snippet of a life of a saint that actually happened in real life. Well, did it actually happen? One may never know. Because um, this is the life of Saint Denis of Paris. Or is it Saint Denis of Paris? 
This was a third century Christian martyr and a saint who, according to the story, was converting too many people to Christianity and the pagan hierarchy did not like that at all. He was martyred for his faith via decapitation. The decapitated bishop then picked up his head and walked several miles while preaching a sermon on repentance. He has then been venerated in the Catholic Church as the patron saint of France in Paris. That's pretty wild. Like, <laughs> you don't have to become beheaded and pray for miles after your death to become a saint in 40k, but if you do that, I'm pretty sure you're guaranteed a spot. Now with that being said guys, let's go ahead and jump into the meat and potatoes of the video by talking about some notable saints, starting with Saint Celestine. Saint Celestine is one of the legendary living saints who has died and has risen again time and time to destroy the enemies of mankind, all thanks to the godly powers of the Emperor of Mankind. However, every time she resurrects, she must first overcome hellish spiritual trials that would break any lesser being. So revered is this saint that she has even been given the honor of wearing the battle armor of none other than Saint Catherine. Saint Catherine will be getting a whole video dedicated for her, so be sure to hit that subscribe button so you guys can check out the video in the following days to come. But let's continue on with none other than Sabbat. Sabbat was a young, unassuming girl of humble origins that rose to prominence after receiving a vision by the Emperor of Mankind. In this vision, he told her that she needed to rally the isolated region of the Segmentum Pacificus she called home and overthrow the agents of the ruinous powers of chaos that had taken root there. Against seemingly impossible odds, she accomplished this feat, and the sector became known as the Sabbat Worlds in her honor. Now, if you remember during that chart that we were following how a regular human can become a saint, we came to a person that was instrumental in freeing and liberating human planets for a large amount of time, and that is none other than Lord Solar Macarius. He is a legendary hero of the Imperium that is believed to be the greatest military commander in the history of the Imperial Guard. He has spearheaded the Makarian Crusade, which led to a thousand worlds being returned to the Imperial Fold after the Age of Apostasy. Now we do have a 40 Facts video on him, so if you guys want more in-depth lore on him, go ahead and check it out, because this was just a human who managed to accomplish all of this and more. Now just in case you guys have a hazy memory, let's go over all of the Loyalist Primarchs just so you guys can remember that besides being War Masters and Primarchs and overall Warriors of the Imperium, they too are Saints. We have currently Robut Gilliman, the Primarch of the Ultramarines, Rogel Dorn, Lehman Russ, Sanguinius, Ferris Manus, Corvus Corax, Vulcan, Jack Daikon, and of course, Lion L. Johnson. Now, of course, the Primarchs would be considered saints, but let's not forget about one of the more famous and instrumental characters in all of 40k, Malkador the Hero. The Emperor's right-hand man for many long centuries, Malkador became the first Lord of Terra during the dark days of the Heresy, ruling the Imperium. After the War Master's betrayal, while the Emperor was performing great works in secret. During the Siege of Terra, Malkador briefly took the Emperor's place on the Golden Throne, freeing the Master of Mankind to face Horus in person. This act costed him his life, but upon being returned to the Golden Throne, the Emperor named Malkador the Hero for his selfless sacrifice and has since been interred in legend as a saint. Now, of course, there are many, many more saints in the Imperium, such as Alicia Dominica, the patron saint of the Order of the Eban Chalice for the Sisters of Battle, and there are tons more, because again, every Order of the Sisters has a saint. So, we'll get into that in a different video, but for now, that is all I wanted to talk about in this one. So if you guys want more information, I'll leave the links to the Warhammer community pages so you guys can check out the lore on that, or hit that subscribe button to check out more lore in the days to come. This has been The Sound Alchemist, and if you guys enjoyed what we do here, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button and comment it down below, or if you wanted to go the extra mile, we do have a Patreon page where a simple dollar helps the channel very, very much. Thanks for listening, guys, and again, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.